Welcome to The Wind Down from The Wind Down TV. I'm Val. And I'm Michelle. And we have a treat for you. We're interviewing Andre Houston Mack. He's the founder of Mason Noir Wines. He's a sommelier, winemaker, graphic artist, designer, author, and as you can see, he's a man of many, many creative hats. He's the producer of the Pinot Noir we're trying today called OPP. You know what? We I think we should have just asked him what he, doesn't he do? Because he does so many wonderful things. I mean, yeah, that's why I said he's a man of many, many creative hats. True, true blue, true blue. All right, enjoy the interview, guys. Enjoy. So, why did you create Maison Noir Wines? I mean, did you, I know we know you're a sommelier, and did you see something lacking in the industry that you thought, oh, I could do that better? You know, it's kind of like, you know, you show up yeah. to the wine store and yeah. Is, you know, there's a wine with a picture of a pug on it, and it's like yeah, a right. cap and it's that high. And you know, I'm kind of <laughs> like, well, wait a minute, like I'm really into it, right? You know, I, I work at one of the best restaurants in the world, and like, who's right. this person, right? right? And like, this person is getting it. Like, there's got to be room for me, uh, right. and you know, and that's and that's kind of how it started, right? So, so I have a question. So yeah. why did you change the name from Mouton Noir to Mason Noir Wines? Yeah, uh, so originally the name of the company was called Mouton Noir Wines. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Mouton Noir was a nickname that I was given by fellow sommeliers when I moved okay. to New York, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, I for me was kind of an alter ego. I kind of embraced it. I designed the logo. It was my screen server when I worked at Per Se. Um, okay. And, you know, so, you know, translates to Black Sheep, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then I want to say maybe seven years in, six years in, uh, I was in an ad campaign for a glass company. Um, and, um, you know, they, so they had, uh, who was it? It was the uh, master distiller from Jack Daniels was featured. Um, um, the master brewer and owner from, um, oh shit, I forgot the name of it. Anyways, a, a beer company. Um, and then the CEO of Mouton Rothschild was in it along with me. Oh, wow. And, um, and so there was uh, obviously, I think they somehow thought that people would be confused by my brand and their brand. You know, I think for me, like I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just some guy doing, you know, doing what I do, and yeah. and I just feel like I'm flattered that they noticed me, right? Right. <laughs> like, whatever, right? You know, and right. it's like, you know, I got I got top billing, you know, that, you know, I'm in it for the story, right? right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'll change the name, right. and that way I don't have to take your money. I don't need to. I can speak freely. Yeah, and, and, right. and, you know, the people who've supported me over the years deserve the right to know why I had to change my name because some assholes yeah. thought that I was in, infringing on their trademark. So, okay, because I know we got a lot of questions for you, but that just <laughs> yeah, led me to the okay. other question based on what you just said. So why go to Oregon versus like Napa or Sonoma or, or why well, there? I was, at all, I, was all in, I was in all of those places. Oh, okay. Right, 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 right. You know, so, so you're in Napa, so the, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, so the idea of, you know, for me, it's, you know, I started this company through the good graces of people I had met and relationships I had formed, you yeah. know, over the years. And so wherever I had extended terms, free terms, no terms, gotcha. is, where I, is where I went. You know, I had no money. You know, I yeah. really built a, a company from receivables. And mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I was in Napa, I was in uh, Sonoma, I was yeah. um, in the ghetto, you know, the wine ghetto in Lompoc. Um, you know, I was, you know, I was in, I was in Washington, um, yeah. I was in Washington, uh, state, I was in Woodenville, uh, and in Oregon, but, you know, I think for me, Oregon, you know, it spoke to me, you know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It felt like it was mm -hmm. still mysterious in a way, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't as flashy as in Napa and, you know, Napa, let's be honest, was expensive, you know, California right. was, uh, Definitely. crowded, right? right? You know, and I felt right. like mm -hmm. Oregon, um, you know, it was a lower, you know, lower cost of entry. Um, right. And it just felt like more room and they felt more like my people. Oh, you do so many more things than just wine, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I well, call you, know, you I mean, this creative with many, many hats. I mean, yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, and a new yeah. author with your coloring book. We love that. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, think, you know. Well, I mean, I think it's just, you know, to, it's all just to feed my creative appetite, right? In a way, right. it's just like, oh, wow. And, you know, just, just, I think wine sometimes is the median or, you know, maybe the house, you know, that it lives yeah. in. But like the idea to me is like, just because you're in wine doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be stale and it does it could be anything. You know, I made a video right. game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what yeah. I mean? Using yeah. wine, yeah. I think, yeah. I, you know, I think to show people that it's 
we don't have to live in this little box of what wine is. I think that more people should think more along those lines and think about complementary businesses to the business that you're already in, right? You know, so right. it's like, hey, um, I make wine, got, you know, so how do, like, but I don't own a place where people drink it at, right? Yeah. Or buy it at, right? right? Um, and so why don't we start to look at that? Um, you know, and, and along those kind of kind of things, it's like, well, well, we should we should have a place where people drink wine at. Yeah, I just think your names are just so creative. Yeah, awesome. I just love them. They're so so cool. cool. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're so I, cool. I, I, I just always felt that they should be playful. They should invoke some yeah. type of emotion. You know, Definitely. if I just said Andre Max Sellers, I mean, what the hell does that mean to you? Right. 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 You know. You know right. what I mean? Right. It's like, oh, yeah. well, I mean, I guess. You know, he must be somebody or he's full of himself or what, what does that, ever, what does that mean? And so, and that kind of, to me, falls into this, you know, that heritage or lineage yeah. thing that kind of makes yes. wine a little, um, you know, it, it brings, pre it adds pretense to wine. And, you know, for me, I, I felt like, you know, if we called the wine love drunk, I think that mm -hmm. we could all interpret that to mean something, something to, yeah. to us personally. We all have a story, personally. right? Yeah. 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 And, you know, you're more likely to remember it and, you know, versus like, I don't know, it was some guy's name. Um, and so, you know, for me that, you know, that was kind of the way of doing it. And, you know, and, you know, Mouton Noir, Maison Noir on, on the back is very small, right? It's yeah. really about the thing that we created on the front. But uh, yeah, I've been having fun <laughs> doing it, you know, it's, uh, you know. I will it's, say it's this, I, when I first, it. when I first heard about the wine, I went to my local wine store, which it's very boutique-y and you know they have like a um, uh, very small selection but they really think about what they put in there and uh, the young man that works there Corey is like you got to try this OPP and I was like mm -hmm. and that's all I saw was the OPP I didn't care right. what was in the bottle yes. I saw OPP <laughs> I knew what it yeah. it automatically <laughs> took me back and I was like I'm getting yeah. it. I don't care what's in that bottle I'm getting it <laughs> yeah, exactly. and I've been drinking it ever since <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much so good yeah, so I totally get what you mean about like the it, it just triggers something in you when you see yeah. you know you know and get fresh yeah. crew okay get fresh yeah, crew. Yeah. I like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah my yeah. my fave is love drunk though I'm like yeah, yeah. Just, uh -huh. you know, that's that's they're all you. great they're all great yeah it's 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 funny how like you know I think people you know, people were afraid to like, just like go out there. And I was like, oh, you know, we'll just call it love drunk. I don't think that there is actually another bottle of wine or alcohol that has the word drunk on it. Oh, that'd be interesting to like research right, yeah. it. Yeah. I've, never, yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah, because it's it was really interesting because I think, um, so, you know, it said, you know, it was love drunk and then on the, on the leaf, you know, it used to yes. say, yes, yes. Avoid, ev avoid hangover, stay drunk. Oh, and, okay. And, oh. and then the and then the government kicked it, it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the government kicked it back and said, "Well, you can't say that because yeah. it it it's alluding to the public that if you drink this wine, you'll never have a hangover, right? right. You know, it was like right. you know that right. this wine has medicinal purposes, right? And I was like, oh shit, okay. And then I was like, ah, you know, I'm gonna change it to avoid hangovers and stay crunk. And then I'm like, sure, like somebody's on Urban Dictionary looking it up. And I was like, you know what? I just would we'll just, we'll just leave it. And so we we you know we added some harm on shit to it you know when reality yeah, is better than reality. dreams yeah yes i love <laughs> which, See, which that, is so I great love yeah that, that yeah. i was like okay this is the one for me. <laughs> that resonated right. it touched my yeah. heart i was all into she, the whole been talking story. about it yeah <laughs> i mean but it makes me you know, smile and feel good yeah but it's, but it's true you know yeah. like yeah i can only be filled with gratitude you know something that mm -hmm. you create it and something that started in your mind and you bring it you breathe life into it um and, and it resonates with it. people and yeah you know and it, and it yeah. changes your life that changed true. my life right yeah wow. so yeah it changed ours too because <laughs> right <laughs> because we have it here today <laughs> awesome oh there you go yeah it's it. mine straight so wait, i want to make sure it's you're, you're straight no, you gotta turn it girl. <laughs> okay <laughs> How would you describe OPP to someone that is a novice like us and that can anticipate what they're about to taste when they experience the wine? Okay, yeah. Um, I would say, you know, um, 
OPP from the Willamette Valley, the Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. It's, you know, it's my interpretation of everyday drinking Willamette Valley Pinot Noir, uh, yeah. encompassing the best of both worlds, has that fruit that you associate with California, meets yeah. that terroir, taste of the land of the, of the old world. Uh, and it meets yeah. in this very glorious place called the Willamette Valley. And, you know, it's my job to kind of kind of try to harness that and put it in a bottle. Um, you know, when I say quintessential Willamette Valley Pinot Noir, you know, I'm talking about high toned red cherry fruit, um, yeah. cranberry, um, a little bit of black tea. Um, and, you know, I always get, you know, a little, a little hint of ginger from the oak, but there is a little bit of floor floor. It is, it is fruit forward, but it's not overly f fruity or jammy, but there is, right. there is that it doesn't finish full of fruit, you know, it finishes right. with this kind of, you know, forest floor underbrush. It's very, would you call it well balanced? I call it well, because, okay, so working on the terms mm -hmm. as, as we go along and learn it, mm -hmm. but it, it's, there's, all, there's like a symmetry to it for me. This is how I'm describing it. Okay. Like it just, it just flows. It's just on to the next thing, on to the next thing, but it mm -hmm. just continues. Like just mm -hmm. takes you on a journey when you drink it. Is that <laughs> yeah, I like right that. to say? No, 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 that's great. I, you know, okay, I would, okay. you know, I, 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 when I say it's balanced, I think it's totally balanced. You know, none of the, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not more fruity. It's not too acidic. You know, all yeah. of those, it's not too alcoholic. All of those things seem to be um, um, all in balance and symbiotic yeah. in that way that yeah. you were talking about. Um, yeah. It's not one thing outshining the other that stands right. out in the other. Um, and, you know, in that way, I feel like that makes the wine very approachable uh, yeah. in the sense that it's ready to drink, um, yeah. you know, Pinot Noir for me is, you know, it's versatility is what I love. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fact that, you know, many different palettes, it can serve many different palettes around the table, um, you know, depend, you know, and many different things on the table. So yeah. that versatility is what, I, is what I really enjoy about it. I love, like I you said already, but it's for me, it's just very easy drinking and the type mm -hmm. of food it can go with is a lot of different types. For anyone that wants to learn about wine that they're new at it. I mean, you know, we're new at it. So how would you advise us going forward to broaden our education? I mean, listen, we've been broadening, okay? We've been broadening. But how would you, <laughs> and I am not complaining with how we're doing, but how, what, what advice would you give us or and other people, you know, that want to learn about wine? But, you know, it's scary. There's so much information yes. and it's all about, it's so subjective. It's like, wait, I'm tasting this, but I, I I, I don't get cherries. I don't know. I don't know. I'm doing it wrong. Right, you know, right, right. Am I doing I, you know, it wrong? Right. It, it says this. What am I if missing? You look up the you know? tasting notes. It'll say this. But say this, I don't, I don't taste get that. that. You know? Right. So, how would you... so yeah. Tasting notes are, that part is subjective. I think you maybe, yeah. you start with more of the facts, right? Like, I think yeah. there's, I, I think there's many different ways. So, like, if you're into food and, and history, so maybe you start on that way and mm -hmm. learn about learn about, you know, different countries, you know, their cuisine, and then they made the local wines to go with the local food. And maybe that's a way in to learn it that way. You know, there's history, you can go that route. Um, geography, right? I think for yeah. me, I think geography was the, was, the, was the entry level. So I think, you know, there's two different parts, right? You know, so yeah. tasting, I think is very important, right? And I think that's, you know, that's, that's training, right? You know, the more yeah. you taste, the better you become at it. Um, right. And then there's also the book aspect and the theory part of it. And, you okay. know, I think sometimes if you do the theory, you know, I think that could help as well. Just like just educating education about a region and those kind of things, I think can strengthen your confidence about talking about a wine. And then yeah. there's this, yes. this, and then it's this other part about actually tasting that wine. So knowing that like in Piedmonte in Italy, right yeah. that you know the grape there is nebbiolo right Barolo right. is nebbiolo right you know because it doesn't yeah. say it on the bottle you know there's many different ways to kind of attack it if we if we you know i would say if we're talking about you know the theory aspect of it you know i say get in where you fit in like what what part interests you the most and start yeah. there doing this show has really opened up my palate because before i was just a um bubbles girl and uh -huh. you know I did some reds but now it's like oh my god I've tried yeah. so many many different wines and it's yeah. it's very interesting it's, yeah because I was strictly that and ha didn't have any idea of like all these just beautiful yeah. gems that I was missing out on and you uh, didn't even great. drink white 
She didn't even drink white. That's she what I'm saying. I yeah. you're right. Exactly. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so I well, definitely cool, branched yeah. out, right? Yeah, that's good. That's good too, yeah. right? And that's you know, I think you know, I tell people in the end, you know, that's some ways, it's you know putting together wine lists is just not things that you like. You got to think about the right. people yeah. who come in. You also got to think about the food and 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 all those things, right? So, um, you know, you have to taste things even if you don't like them just to kind of, to be able to evaluate them and, and, and more importantly, know what's out there. So when are you coming out with another wine? Are you done for now or where are you at in the process? Can I no. ask? No, yeah, no, no, totally. Okay. I mean, we have new stuff coming out all the time. Um, that's new fun. projects and things that we've been working on. Um, I think the biggest thing is that we have our sparkling coming out. Cremant de Orgonia will come out. Uh, oh, what is fall, that? Okay, you're speaking fall, my language. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Get the girl her bubbles. Get her bubbles. <laughs> yep. yeah. So that, that's coming out uh, okay. the fall of this year. And then you'll see th okay. different things pop up. Just, you know, we got some new Syrah that we've been working on that will come out. Um, okay. And then, and then you'll start to see, you'll have to wait for all the various projects and collaborations and things that we're doing with some, with some different people. So um, it'll be fun. Wonderful. We love your wine. We love everything about you. We love your whole vibe. Thank yes. you so much for like Thank you so chatting much. with us. Well, guys, we hope that you enjoyed that interview as much as we did having it with him. We thank him so much for taking the time to chat with the Wine Down family. And we hope you learned something or a lot of things from what he said. So until the next time we see you, drink lots of OPP. Yeah, you know me. Oh, okay, sorry. Drink, stay focused. Drink lots of OPP and cheers until we drink together again, guys. Cheers. Cheers. cheers.